The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Karen, what are we gonna do in today's episode? I have an idea. Look what I found. It's the new Xbox One S. Ooh. Can we take it apart? Can we take it apart? Of course we're gonna take it apart. So this just came out. It is the new version of the Xbox One called the S for Slim. It's supposed to be a lot smaller than the original Xbox One, which was enormous. Mm-hmm, so can, can we? Can we take it apart now? Yeah, so in today's episode, we're going to do a teardown on this, see what's inside, and then talk about what's different between it and the older Xbox One. And then of course, think about cool things we could do with the guts in a future episode. Sweet. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Where are my dragons? Inspired designs. Oh, look, I knocked some hot glue loose. Regrettable acting. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Everyone knows I can't resist taking apart video game consoles, so of course I had to get the new slim Xbox One as soon as it was available. And here it is. Even the box is smaller. In fact, the box is not that much bigger than the old Xbox One. This thing was huge. So yeah, here are the heroes of Xbox. Laura Croft, Master Chief, Marcus Phoenix, and a car. So let's see what's inside. Oh, it's welcoming me to Xbox. You don't even need words, it just explains it. I think this one has an integrated power brick. That's the rumor at least. Okay, AC cable. Oh, comes with an HDMI cable. Yeah, I guess HDMI cables are pretty common now. They used to be pretty rare. It's like, oh no, you don't get one. That would cost extra money. Yeah, I guess that's long enough. Oh yeah, I think this has a slightly redesigned controller too, which is good to know because we make those accessibility controllers. So every time they change it, we have to accommodate for it. Gotta admire these big companies. They have the money like, oh, let's just change the mold. Let's change the mold again. Yeah, you have, you have unlimited money. Everyone watching is like, we don't care about the controller. We just want to see the console. Well, I care about the controller. The original Xbox One controller only had this port on the bottom of it. Then about a year ago, they added a headphone jack. So you didn't have to use that chunky adapter. But then I heard that the controller has been tweaked as well. I mean, on the surface, it doesn't seem different. Okay, well, they've added something here. Oh, okay, they moved the, uh, the wireless module. They might have combined the wireless module with the main system on a chip, which I believe was some kind of arm before. I hope they didn't change it too much, or otherwise I'm gonna cry. Yeah, see, this is gonna be the antenna here. Now those are the same. See how they stick if you go all the way? It actually causes us problems when we build these accessibility controllers for people because the only thing that prevents the stick from sticking is the edge of the analog thing itself. See, in this case, it actually will hit the PCB and that'll stop it. And this one hits the edge of the plastic frame. I mean, it can't be radically different. They wouldn't have made it incompatible, the older system. I just hope the interconnects are still there. Feels like they are. Oh, there's only one now. <sighs> well, toad the wet sprocket. Let's see, what would this have? This would have the B button and the analogs and everything else would be on this connector. So in the old controllers, there were two of these connectors. Now there's only one. Well, that's gonna cost us some time. I wonder why they did that. Originally on these controllers, there was a Wi-Fi module here and then there was a system on a chip here. They've clearly combined that into one package. You know what they probably did was they, I mean, this is the only thing that interconnects the boards now. They probably just made it more concise. Instead of having two things with a lot of redundancy, they just have one. Because you'd still have to pass through all the same signals such as up, down, left, right, X, A, B, and the face buttons. Well, we'll have to take a look at that in more detail later. I will continue to unbox the system and I will stop crying about the controller. Oh, I think this is the thing that lets it stand up on end. And this is some sort of Xbox gold deal. Wow, 14 day trial. All right, system itself. Bye bye box. Oh no, Master Chief. It's like a baby. Oh, well, first thing we have to do. Well, I mean, it's not astronomically smaller. I mean, it's a lot more concise. Take a look at the rear ports. Still has the HDMI pass-through. That's kind of interesting. 
Oh no, the connect connector is gone. I'm so sad. All right, ethernet, ethernet. Oh, spdif, spdif, IR out. That's, oh, that's still there, all right. So yeah, it basically has all the same connections except for the connect is gone. Oh gosh. That's too bad. So this is a lot closer in size to the PlayStation 4. But remember the red ring of death thing on the Xbox 360? That, you know, wasn't super great. That cost a lot of money fixing that. So on the Xbox One, they put a very large heat sink on the system, probably a lot larger than it needed just to be safe. I mean, as some of you probably know, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 are very similar systems. And the Xbox One had a separate power supply, a power brick, and a huge fan, whereas the PlayStation 4 had an integrated power supply and a smaller fan, even though for all intents and purposes, their main APUs are basically the same. But Sony basically, I don't want to say took a chance, but they weren't as worried about heat dissipation as Microsoft was. I believe this unit can run the 4K Blu-rays, which are the new thing that apparently people want. So they do advertise this being 4K, but that's only going to do like 4K Netflix or 4K Blu-rays. The games aren't going to be 4K. I mean, there's no reason why the older consoles could have, couldn't have run 4K, except for the fact that they didn't have a high enough HDMI port spec in order to output it. So these are probably HDMI 2.0, if I had to guess. So here's the design trick. They make this black, so you don't really notice it. So you see the thickness as being the white section, not this. So yeah, let's take a look at the front of it. Oh wow, actual clicky buttons. This thing had like a touch sensor and it was kind of I don't know, didn't feel very satisfying. Do not move the console without first removing any disc inside. Yeah, yeah, we know. Only one USB port in the front, that's not so great. Oh wait, there's a note on the bottom. Hello from Seattle. That's where Microsoft is. Well, it's been 10 seconds. I think we need to take this thing apart. I think it's, this is the fastest I've ever taken a new console apart. Let's see, I'm guessing it first involves popping off the bottom of this. Wow, this, the whole top of it is one solid white piece of plastic. Oh, look, a sticker. You know what that means? There's something underneath it. So if they see that the sticker is gone, your warranty is gone. I don't even know what a warranty is. I don't care either. Maybe they made this easier to open than the old consoles because Xbox 360 actually wasn't a trivial thing to take apart. There's a lot of steps. Hopefully there's no booby traps in this thing. That's weird. 1.8 amps at 100 volts. They don't mention the wattage. What would that be? Let's say 110 volts times 1.8 amps. So just under 200 watts. That's not too bad. The original Xbox 360 was 250 watts. And I think they got it down to about 175. Of course, this is beefier hardware, but it's also newer hardware. When I was a kid, we had screws. There's one, there's another. Give me your secrets. There we go. I just see how quickly I can turn this into the laptop. <laughs> oh, okay, so the IR sensor is not even attached. Bye bye. Thanks for playing. Oh boy, it's our good old friend, the Xbox heatsink grid. It just never changes. Xbox heatsink mounts. Xbox heatsink mounts never changes. So this is actually kind of assembled closer to the original Xbox 360 than the Xbox One. All right, so some of these screws are going to be, well, actually probably most of these screws are gonna be attached to the front of the unit. So we have to remove them to continue our teardown. We're doing this thing lately on the show, we call it the Batman v Superman test. We go around seeing if any of us have mothers with the same names. And if we do, that means we can never fight each other, at least not to the death. And the main cross-reference we found so far is Felix's mom's name is Karen, which means Karen can't fight Felix to the death. That makes sense. Still a pretty good size fan on this thing. Ooh. Oh, this just lifts off. Wow. Hey, this is actually really well laid out. Look at the labeling on it. Disc, hard drive, power fan. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Back in the day, I was really impressed with how well everything inside of the PlayStation 3 was laid out. It was like a welcome mat, like they expected guests. This is probably, as usual, just held in place by the fact that there was something over it. Well, this is a very small power brick. Look at that. Oh, check out the little drawing of Master Chief. It's like Master Chief is Mega Man or something. So remember, if you ever want Ben Affleck to stop killing you, tell him what your mom's name is. As per usual, I'm probably gonna have to remove the hard drive before I can move the Blu-ray drive. Guessing that's gonna be this one. Oh, what the hey, I'll just remove them all. This X is the mounting point for the APU, which is the combination CPU and uh, video chip. Sony does their 
heatsink mounting a little differently, whereas Xbox or Microsoft has done it like that since the Xbox 360. So we've got, yet again, a mechanical SATA drive. That's in there pretty good. There it goes. Oh, Seagate. It was a Samsung before. The uh, PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One originally had the exact same model Samsung uh, 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now we have a small two terabyte Seagate drive. Yep, yet again, we get... <laughs> Man, they've been doing this for like 12 years now. Actually, no longer than that. The power connector for all of the Xbox consoles is basically always the same. It's a uh, like a two by five, 10 pin header. Doesn't use like a standard, you know, ATX header. But that's all right. I mean, from a hacking standpoint, the problem with that is you have to manually rewire it if you want to put it someplace else. Oh, this is pretty nice. Like it's got like a little diaper on it, holding it in place. Pretty well done. All right, let's see where we are before we go too much further here. This is going to be your north bridge that controls all the peripherals and the video. See how it goes back here to the ports. Um, this is going to be the wireless module, which is once again connected as a separate part. Oh, probably because they have to have it outside of the RF shielding. See how it's not in the cage? See that? Because otherwise, it couldn't get the signal out. That's why, you know, even if your cell phone is, you know, completely aluminum, there's going to be a little bit of it that is not metal, so the signal can get out. Internal power supply. I like how everything's labeled. That's pretty uh, self-contained. See if we could fire that up on its own. We'll take a look inside this, too. Got a tab on it. There's two colored wires, gray and black. I'm assuming this is probably 12 volts out. Yep, okay. Input, 100 volts at 1.8 amps. Output, 12 volts at 10 amps. Because the lower the voltage, the higher the amps and vice versa. Power supply. Now well, there's a bunch of passive components and some <sighs> integrated circuits. So the power supply is actually pretty small compared to what we've seen in the past with the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. There's not a whole lot to it. Just a couple transformers, some caps, and a bunch of coils. Is it a uh, solid state fuse? Let's see here. For continued protection against risk of fire, replace only with the same type and rating of fuse. So yeah, it's got a replaceable fuse here in case you really muck things up. Although it's probably resettable, like most of these fuses are. Yeah, and then right here we have ground and 12 volts, so that's where all the power comes out. So there's more inside the unit, and the unit is smaller. Well done. <laughs> well, this used to be the ring of death <laughs> adapter, but now it's probably... This is going to be for the controllers, and then this is for the Wi-Fi. So let's just remove this, and then we'll be able to take the circuit board out the main PCB. Oh, that's weird. A non-populated integrated circuit. Actually, a couple things are missing. Guess they just built it in somewhere else. <sighs> We're gonna have to remove the heat sink to get this lower RF shielding off. Hopefully this is like all the other consoles. Otherwise, it's gonna be Brick City all up in this joint. I don't know if I'm cool enough to say things like that. All right, I think there's nothing left holding the board in place. So the board should pop out, although this will stay in place because of thermal paste. What's that do, I wonder? Oh, well, that might be the orientation detector. So if it knows if it's standing up or down, although I don't know why that would matter. Because in the old Xbox 360, if you tilted the system up, the lights would change. So when it's laying down like this, player one would be like the upper left ring in the ring of light. So when you rotated it, you know, it would be now the upper right. So the orientation detector basically just told the console how to draw the ring of light. Oh, okay, that USB port is sticking to the front, which means we actually have to pull it up from the rear. Another one of those things. What does that do? It might just be a mounting point, maybe. That's odd. Yay! Let's see, the fan is probably clipped to the heat sink. Yes. Oh, it's our old friend, the X-Clamp. Hello, X-Clamp, my old friend. I've come to remove you again. There it is, APU at the heart of the Xbox One. So this is a combination graphics and CPU. And if you notice, it's going to all of the RAM. It's all on the top, so let's see how many we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so it's going to be 16 512 megabyte RAMs, which would be a total of eight gigs. Guess we could look up the part number if we wanted. 
If you notice on the board here, see all the squiggly lines between the RAM and the chip? They do that so all of the RAM have the same access time. It actually takes the electrons a little bit longer <laughs> to go down these paths than it does with other paths because you know the RAM is spaced out from the CPU. So they actually do that on purpose to make sure that everything is equal. This heatsink is way, 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 way smaller than what was in the original Xbox One. Again, Microsoft is like, okay, this thing isn't overheating. Now we can save some money. <laughs> the fan makes it look big, but it's quite flat. Also, uh, they didn't have heat pipes before. That's what these are. They basically help the heat flow from this point to the outer points. It was basically a really thick aluminum heat sink and had a solid copper core. The copper core went right down in the chip and came up all the way through the heat sink, and then it radiated out into the aluminum, well, actually, steel heatsink. And that probably cost a lot of money. But again, it was cheaper than having your console overheat and having to send people a replacement console. Well, I noticed that when I did the teardown on the PlayStation 4, the heatsink was about half the size of the heatsink on the Xbox One, even though they're basically the same thing. I'm gonna clean up the APU so we can take a better look at it. Here's all of the parts we found inside the new Xbox One S. So it has a drastically reduced heat sink because now I suppose Microsoft trusts the AMD APU that runs this unit. I mean, no joke, this is probably about one third the mass of the heat sink inside of the older Xbox One. The front connector is mostly the same, except for it doesn't have those stupid printed touch circuits. Instead, it's just got nice tack switches. You just push them and things happen. That's great for modding purposes. We have power, sync, eject all on this one board. So this, you know, if we were modding this, for instance, you know, this would be really easy to put it in an angle, for instance. So the Blu-ray drive, this is the newer Blu-ray drive. It can run Ultra HD 4K Blu-rays. The uh, rumored PlayStation 4.5 Neo will also do the same thing. You can't render a game at 4K on this hardware, but you could show 4K Netflix or a 4K Blu-ray. So the fact that it can output that is, you know, a step in the right direction. This is pretty much the same as the last unit. It's just a Wi-Fi module that is outside the RF cage, obviously, so the signals can get out of it. This part of the board is not really that much different. I mean, having 16 RAM chips connected to an APU, which is a combination GPU and CPU, uh, and your North Bridge, speaker, that's all pretty standard. I don't exactly know what these things are. I saw them in a couple places. I think they might just be some sort of supports for the casing. The Hard drive and Blu-ray drive connectors are the same as they've always been since the dawn of the Xbox. So yeah, this is the drastically reduced in size power supply. 110 in, 12 volts out, 10 amps. This might be in spitting range of actually being replaced by a battery pack. It'd be cool if we could actually make a battery powered Xbox portable. All those Xbox portables I made in the past all required wall power, which was, you know, all right. But, you know, if we could make it run on batteries, that'd be pretty cool because this thing would clean the clock of pretty much any gaming laptop, or at least, you know, not until you get into like a three or $4,000 Alienware. Two terabyte Seagate hard drive. It would be cool if they had a solid state drive. I don't know if you can replace the drive on this. It's not NTSF, it's a different type of file system that they use for the Xbox line. But you might be able to clone this and then shrink the volume down into an SSD. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like this drive takes that much power. SSD is more about speed. For us, we'd be trying to save power. I don't think it'd be that big of a deal. I don't know. I mean, an SSD would take less power. All the ports in the back are pretty much the same. You know, if we were to make this into some sort of laptop, one challenge would be, you know, getting the HDMI out at a right angle. We could try soldering <laughs> directly to these pads. If you take a look here, you can see the four differential pairs. See that? So HDMI is all it is really is four differential pairs. So you could piggyback them right here, although you have to make sure everything's nice and isolated because otherwise you're going to have interference at the high speeds that it runs at. Um, this uh, USB connector in the front's kind of weird. See how it's mounted on the bottom of the unit? So the board doesn't actually sit flat. However, thankfully, it's all through hole, so we could remove that and put it someplace else without too much difficulty. Although again, we want to keep the length of the wires as short as possible so we don't interrupt the differential signaling. Yeah, all in all, not too bad of a system. Again, it's not drastically smaller than the old one, but it is a lot more compact and just it just feels nicer. And you know, Microsoft is going to achieve a lot of cost reduction with this model. I mean, you know, they don't give metal away. And this is just all, well, steel and aluminum. That's cheaper than having a solid copper core. 
So now that it's all in pieces, what are you gonna do with it now? Well, I suppose people would expect us to make a laptop out of it. Oh. It's been a while since I've done that. What do you think? You think that'd be cool? I think that's a good idea. So we could game on the go. I bet we could find other ideas too. Oh yeah, like on the community. So let us know what you think we should do with this thing. Should we make it a laptop? What kind of LCD screen should we use? Can you get an HDMI screen that's small enough? Do we need the Blu-ray drive? Maybe it's detachable. Let us know on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.